what Jesus is saying in the Course. He says, oh yeah, you can see this world without any help. You can see this world without any help. But you need help to see another world. You need help to have spiritual vision. You need a lot of help to come back to remember who you are as the Christ. You can see this world without help. It's that good old autonomy, you know. I'll make a world apart from heaven and I'll I did it my way. <laughs> yes, there were times, I'm sure you do, when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. And through it all, I stood tall. I did it my way. Frank Sinatra was actually singing that song on a Las Vegas stage at one point, and he fell over face first, and his head pressed into the stage when he was singing that song. <laughs> the elderly Frank Sinatra, not the young 50s mom. It was a, and, and when I heard the story, I was like, what would you expect? <laughs> that to me was the symbol of the ego. I'll do it my way and boom. <laughs> Face first on the stage. Um, so this is what we're saying. If you really follow these teachings, why would you want to maintain an autonomous, individual, separate self? Why would you even want to hold on to being an autonomous, individual, Course in Miracles student? <laughs> Why would you want to hold on to being a Course in Miracles individual, Course in Miracles teacher? Why would you want to hold on to being a famous Course in Miracles individual independent teacher? Why would you want to hold on to being an avatar? Why would you want to hold on to you know, all these things that people aspire to in a spiritual community, to being an enlightened person? Is that all that you can come up with? You know, when it's all based on autonomy. It's all based on independence. It's all based on control. It's all based on a separate identity. But we're playing it out here in a very obvious way just to show you can let go. You can retire right now from this spiritual search as well. If you see that you're driven by the idea that you're going to become a more spiritual person, you can stop that right now. That's just going to be another lot of effort put into much to do about nothing. You know, even being a spiritual person or a spiritual guru or whatever, all that stuff is just more like spinning your wheels and, and avoiding the holy instant, which is right here, right now. So you see how this saves you time. We're just saving days, weeks, months, years of your life are being saved. <laughs> And why would you go through these same rituals? A lot of times on the spiritual journey, this is the same with theologies, but in churches and so forth, there's all these rituals. If you put your body in this position, and you do these things, and you put these certain things in your mouth, and, and you do them so many times a day, or you say these mantras, you know, over and over and over, even chanting, you know, even chanting. <laughs> I have to say, like, what's the big deal yeah. with this chanting stuff? You know, Jesus has part of one of his lessons. So today we lay aside our, all of our chants and bits of magic. You know, these are, it's, nothing is sacred on this planet. Nothing, nothing repetitive will take you back into the holy instant. It's your desire. It's the desire in your heart. You know, this world arose from the desire for something other than God. And it's your very desire, it's your heart, it's your prayer, it's the core of you that is so much wants to remember who it really is. That's what's going to take you there. That's what's going to collapse time. And everything else, if the symbols are there and they seem helpful and useful, there's nothing wrong with them. But, but anything, ultimately, that that involves a lot of repetition, repetition, is really, you're going to outgrow that too. Isn't that fun? 
It doesn't feel fun to think you can have a spontaneous spiritual journey in the moment without a prescribed program that tells you you must chant, you must you know, prostrate yourself and lay on the carpet and do whatever, you know, it's like at some point it's, it's actually refreshing to think that you can have a spontaneous awakening just from following your intuition without getting into all these repetitions. There's some value, I mean even the Course, I mean if you look at the workbook of the Course of Miracles, there's some repetitions, but he never says that you should do this workbook over and over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> I go around the country and around the world, so I go to all these Course of Miracles groups and it was one thing to go in like in the 80s and then in the 90s and then in the 2000s, now we're 2014 and I spoke at the oldest Course of Miracles group in the world, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the 35th anniversary years ago. Judy Sketch, you know, had come through there and dropped a book off way back. But it was all these things. And I remember going down to, with my friend Carrie to travel these groups, and she would watch in these course groups. They would be reading the book and reading the book, and then we would go to more groups and more groups and more groups, and she said, Please tell me I'm not going to grow up to be this old person <laughs> with long white hair, still yeah. reading the book, paragraph by paragraph, as an old person with wrinkles. Please tell me that this, I'm not seeing my life in front of me. This, we went to Florida, so we were in some retirement communities too, and there's some people, you know, it's not about repetition. Repetition is a step along the way that can be a value that's given to the Holy Spirit. But she was just saying, please, there's got to be more. Isn't there something else? So with this repetition of the workbook lessons and so on and so forth, that's, again, you really have to be under the guidance of the Spirit. The Spirit wants you to dive into the experience, wants you to transfer the training, wants you to be free of the belief in time, and, and not have you linger in time. And so that's really a, the value of what we're sharing here. We're just, we're diving into the miracle. We're here to save time. We're not here to perpetuate time. And we're not even so concerned about the language. I don't feel any kind of affiliation with the Course in Miracles at all, actually. I haven't read the book or carried it around with me for many, many, many years. But it's about the present moment. It's about an experience, and in the end you have to let go of all attachments and affiliations with everything. It was only to set you up with your eternal teacher. That's all it was for, just to make you be in contact with your eternal teacher.